Welcome to this edition of At The Mic. I'm your host, Keith Malinak. My guest this week is Cambry Nelson. You probably know her for her bold online presence. She does not shy away from sharing her opinion, and my conversation with her is coming up right after I tell you about American Pride Roasters Coffee, the inaugural sponsor for At The Mic. I love APR Coffee. It's so great. If you haven't tried it yet, I have to ask, what are you waiting for? At APRCoffee.com, the Iowa-based team brews only the best coffee, and they don't just sell the aromatic coffee beans. They also sell coffee drops, K-cups, samplers, gift cards, you name it. American Pride Roasters has you covered. And this month, they're featuring the Franklin Blend, named after the Sudoku creator himself, Ben Franklin. Well, he called them magic squares, and he invented them out of boredom during congressional debates. Times really haven't changed, have they? But in addition to those magic squares, of course, Ben Franklin embraced humor, Morality, virtue, hard work, and the coffee named after him is a complex, bold brew that works as a daily coffee, an excellent espresso, or even served as a cold brew. The Franklin features French roasted Colombian beans, and it's without question one of the many delicious flavors you need to try when you head over to aprcoffee.com. And through April, order at least two pounds of coffee, type in ATM in the special instructions section, and during checkout, And they're going to include an 8-ounce bag of the Reagan, a time for choosing. That's a $10 value, and you get it for free, aprcoffee.com. You're listening to At The Mic with Keith, an independent podcast production. Cambry Nelson is this week's guest on At The Mic. Cambry is a native Texan who moved to California. Now she's back in the Lone Star State where she stays busy shaking things up by sharing her opinions any chance that she gets. And, oh, she has an embarrassing story that she'll share with us during this conversation that will live in At The Mic lore forever. Without further delay, let's get to it. Here's my conversation with Cambry Nelson. Cambry, thanks for making time. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me on today. Yeah. Good to meet you in face-to-face, actually. That's right. That's right. Nice to meet you in person. I'm quite aware of your political commentaries and your online presence. You were born in Texas. Right. You're now in Texas, Mm -hmm. but there's a lot that's happened in between. Right. The last seven years, we've been Uh in California. Wow. It was crazy. It was, we had a decision that we had to make in our life. Uh Uh-huh. So at the time, we were with one company and we chose the company and then the headquarters happened to be in California. Anaheim. Okay. Well, and you're talking about a company that you share with your husband, Josh. Yes, my okay. husband, Josh. So um, we were asked to be co-owners of a company. And it just happened to be in Anaheim, California. My husband's from California. So we made a decision to get rid of the home in, on the islands in Oahu. Yeah. I mean, listen, now now we're involving Hawaii in this conversation. <laughs> we're going to be all, literally all over the map. I was happy. I loved the beach. Uh-huh. I liked it. Lived in California for seven years, and then the last five years, things started changing in the state. And we started noticing just how out of control things started becoming. Um, You're talking about California. California, Mm -hmm. it was different. So we started noting the education was shifting. Mm -hmm. Um, Gas prices started rising. (laughs) They started adding new taxes. It's almost like the state went hysterical. Mm -hmm. And... Crime was on the rise. Stepping over homeless people, driving home and seeing someone bathing Mm -hmm. in the wash behind the house. My husband got sick of it. He's the one that got sick of it first. Uh Me, I was not. Okay. Yet. Because I had, I'm a mother. So mine was, we have to be consistent with our children. Uh And we have to make sure that the kids are staying in school so they don't have to leave their friends and we can keep them there. But it it just got to be where it was just too much. He decided, hey, let's take a break and uh, let's go ahead and start our own company. So we did that. Okay. So he decided to start working and then it started blowing up here. <laughs> well, that's good. Right here in Texas. You guys so. are successful no matter where you're at. You have the unique position where you're kind of a California refugee. That's what I call myself. But, but. you're also a Texas right. native. How long were you in Texas originally? Because you grew up here. My whole life. Yeah. Born and bred here. So I how mean, did someone who is so 
familiar with Texas and what all is represented there, congratulations to you for toughing it out in California as well as you did. <laughs> <laughs> but so eventually you guys ended up back here. Right. And by the way, you talked about your kids. You have a son and a daughter, both teenagers, correct? Right. Okay. Son's about to be 19. Um, daughter's a freshman in high school. She's a cheerleader. So she's 14 years old. She's a young freshman. So she's uh, she's good. She's definitely, it's, it's funny, the dynamics between the kids and us is very, very different because coming back to Texas was a culture shock. I'll say it. I have two little liberal children oh, with I see. two more center right parents. <laughs> so yeah, so it's it's interesting the conversations that go on in this house, uh-huh. and you just have to, to be honest with you, is allow them. If I start talking about, hey, you know what? This is, they say I'm fact checking them, so they don't want me to <laughs> fact check them. Now my son, being 18 years old, he gets it now. Okay, I am never moving back to California because I'm not paying four dollars for gas prices uh-huh. when it was, you know, what months ago, a dollar something. Mm-hmm. But he still wants a Prius. <laughs> he still wants a Prius though, so it's, gotcha. it's great. But I gotcha. yeah, so it's just it's different. I love California. Don't get me wrong. Right. It's beautiful. They have the beaches. They have. I mean, it's gorgeous. <laughs> It's just really is gorgeous, but I'm glad to be home back in Texas. My whole family is here. But there are times when it's winter and <laughs> I would prefer to be in my flip flops sitting you know, in my backyard in December. I got you. I got you. <laughs> now, now you talk about fact checking your kids. If they tell you they clean the room, do you have to go up there and fact check to make sure that, that the room is definitely clean? No, not or? with Emma. No. <laughs> not with Emma, I don't. Because she'll just, I just know, she says, Mom, I'm cleaning my room. Huh. She'll clean her room. Because she'll come down with trash bags saying, uh, hey, you know, I'm going to throw this away or throw this away. Yeah, so she's really easy. She's she's definitely easy to... For us, <laughs> we've got the son who keeps his room nice and tidy right. and the two girls who share a bathroom. I mean, it's a tornado every hour goes through those rooms. So it sounds like it's a little flip for you, huh? Yeah, it is a little flip. <laughs> okay. like Emma, Emma's, uh, she definitely... Some, now, she'll have piles of clothes on the floor. She will. She'll pile her clothes on the floor, but she knows exactly where say, everything is. Yeah, you got a system. I know where things are. If I throw my stuff on the floor right. in the bathroom. Oh, in the bathroom. I see. And I have my. I will know where it is. Where's that? Right there. Uh huh. Where's them britches? Yeah. Right over there. I know exactly where they are. And see, that's just it. Like, I'm such a hypocrite. Where I'll tell my kids. In fact, I've given up though on the closets. You know. Right. Like they, they, I just let them have that. And you know what? That's your wasteland because right. I, I'm guilty of the same thing. And 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 so when they say. I know where everything is. I've got to say to myself, I'm the same way. I know where they get that disorganized organization. Right. So you have two brothers and two sisters yourself. Where do you fall along the line there? Well, I have my two brothers. Um, my brother, Kevin, he's older than I am. Okay. He's 40. He's 44. May 45. 45. I, yeah, I forget how old I am all the time. <laughs> this COVID has like set me back like two years. 42. I mean, he's 46. I think I'm 42. I'm, 40, I'm not going to fact check it. Yeah, I'm 42. <laughs> I failed math, so I don't even go there. Oh, trying you to figure and me out my both. Age. Yes, see? That's why, oh. we're, that's why we're friends. Oh, and there's a hashtag, Keith math, for a reason, okay? <laughs> Wait, are we both like do math like Common Core? <laughs> let, me, let me explain. Let me explain my situation, okay? Okay. So I was the unique student at my high school where... I was in this media productions class. Okay. That, you know, there's just a few of us, blah, 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 right? Then at the same time that I would go to this advanced media productions class, I was also going out to the trailer for literally the lowest level math possible. <laughs> so so I, I rub shoulders with both ends of the spectrum in my school. <laughs> anyway, I, I'm, I'm notoriously bad at math, as any member of this audience can attest to. So you have an older brother, then it's you, and you have three younger siblings from so there? No, no. no. So oh, I my, messed that I, up. I See, I'm my, bad at math. Yeah, no. Nah, no, it's okay. I have, I have, like, my two brothers. One, my brother's Kevin. I have another brother that is Rob. Rob has basically, like, we adopted him. He lived with us our whole life. He's mm. Native American, 100%. Danced for the queen. Um, so he's my brother, Rob, and then my biological brother, Kevin. Okay. And then my father got married a few years ago, so I have a stepbrother and a stepsister. Okay. So we're all here. You know what's okay. funny, though, is, like, one of the brothers, Rob, is, of course, Oklahoma. You know, he lives here, but is an OU fan. And then I'm a hardcore tech. Texas Longhorn fan, so every year we get to fight, and it is the best fight when it's Texas OU weekend. Mm-hmm. So it's like the family clashes, and it's Epic, awesome. Huh? 
Yeah, you went to college. University of North Texas. Yeah, here in Denton, um, locally. What did you go to school for? Well, originally I went to school for um, speech pathology, but there was just one problem that I had with speech pathology. My hearing was starting to get worse. Oh. Yeah, so my hearing was really starting to get worse. So speech, I struggled with just a little bit, and that's when I really started reading lips. Now today, here oh, wow. I am, 20 plus years later, deaf in this year, can hardly hear in this year, and I read your lips. So welcome to life with people with masks on. They think I'm like the rudest woman in the world because I just don't respond back. So I went to school up there for a year, and then came back to Dallas and started going to school in medicine, and then worked in psychiatric medicine after that. So you're reading my lips right now. I am. But I'm kind of a mumbler. You know, if somebody you're, mumbles, I can hear you. Yeah, a little yeah. bit out of this year, but I can. Okay, read but your let's just say mumbler. Then I okay. But let's just say that that you, for whatever reason, right, you can't hear at all. Right. Whether you know you might have an earplug in, whatever. Right. Uh, here's a good example. Okay. You're watching a football game. You're watching Texas OU. Right. All right, and the coach is yelling, and you can't hear what he's saying. Can you read his lips? Sometimes I can. <laughs> Sometimes dangerous. I can, but nine, nine times out of ten, he has his lips covered because he doesn't want anybody to know what he's saying. That's true. But yeah. it's funny. is because when, when I went to my otol, uh, otolaryngologist, they, they do this. Wait, this you're who? Otolaryngologist is someone that it works on your ears and your hearing. Yeah, it's a crazy Seven thing. syllable word? That's right. got to be a record for well, at the mic. They, they cover their mouth and they say, say the word hot dog. <laughs> I'm all long johns. <laughs> because uh -huh. I can't read their mouth. So right. sometimes I did this last night to my husband. He said something and I re responded completely with the 180 <laughs> answer. So I'll have a totally different conversation. If I hear, if I hear something and uh -huh. it's not what you said, I will reply back with something off the wall uh -huh. and then they'll just start laughing. Oh, that's funny. It, it, it's it's kind of fun. I hope it happens during this podcast. I hope I like ask you a question about your family and you start telling me the gas mileage. Of no, seriously, your it, it, it happens a lot. <laughs> and some of my family members get frustrated. Uh -huh. um, sometimes they just start laughing. They're like, what are you talking yeah, about? Yeah, they, and I'm like, you just started talking about this. They're like, we didn't even say that. Yeah. I'm like, Dude. Yeah. They're like, put that, your hearing aids in. Cam. I can see depending on the mood of the other person in the conversation, right. that could either be a funny distraction or very frustrating if it's something right. serious. I, I brought up the coaches on TV. That's the thing about the age of COVID. It's like you can't see their lips now because they're wearing a mask, but yet there's no fan so you can hear. So it's kind of a trade off. Right. There. And it's frustrating because you can't, and this is a problem, people with hearing aids. And for those of you listening that have hearing aids, it's frustrating. You put your hearing aid on your ear, you put your mask on and you can break your wire. That's why I can't wear oh. it with the mask on. So my stepdad's hearing aid, they broke and they just giggle when he came in. They said everyone's wires popping off because of the mask. They're all behind their ears. Terrible. So you wanted to be a speech pathologist. Right. But at what point did you decide, ah, I want to be a... Uh, professional grocery clerk that is when i was four years old my parents owned a donut store okay for some reason i was thinking you left speech pathology and thought <laughs> oh now i'm getting into the grocery store business no i got gotcha. you i got it now when okay. i was little i my when i was little i wanted to check out at the grocery store i just uh -huh. wanted to scan and now actually i get to i do self-checkout you get to scan <laughs> it you get to bag it oh yourself. yeah totally see but but has it come full circle with you because when i was a kid i wanted to be able to do that too and now i find myself doing that and it's like oh crap now i've got to bag them and and, and I've got to trick the stupid machine that thinks I'm trying to <laughs> steal Pop-Tarts, you know, so it's kind of like now, now I wish I should just go in the other line, you know, but I, I like doing self-checkout. Mm. I really do. It's fun because when I was younger, I used to I play with stuff like that, but I yeah. did. I, I wanted to go to speech path, um, chose a different path after that um, and went into medicine and then started going to school to do um, a nursing and then worked in psychiatric medicine was where I ended up at the very end. But I, so I love the medical industry because I really love helping people. Uh -huh. So I am a people person. I, I like, I'll say I like to fix people sometimes. Hmm. Yeah, I'll say that, that. I can say that. I do. I like to fix. Uh -oh. I like to help uh -oh. people. I like to see their lives Even change. Even in situations where you're not invited or... 
Sometimes I kind of know <laughs> unsolicited where, advice. <laughs> you know, typically nine times out of ten, you, working in psychiatric psychiatric medicine, I have a lot of people that come to me and go, you know, Cam, let me ask you a question here. It's just because I just I have to see things from different points of view. You have to weigh the pros and the cons. If you do this, this is going to be it. But I loved medicine um, up until a point where I really started seeing the flip side of medicine, and well, I chose to to go ahead and walk away and then yeah. have a child and so you were a triage nurse at a psychiatric institute right right so does that mean that you're somebody says i need to commit myself they're seeing you first not necessarily when i well, i would tri- had two roles um i would triage patients bring them in blood pressure they okay. would take you and take your vitals, take your blood pressure, take you back to a room. How are you doing on your medicine? All of that. If they need a, you know, an EKG done, we get them prepped for that. So we just questioned them about since their last med check of how they were doing. Um, I also worked in a room that was room number seven. That was suicide room. Oh, goodness. So that had to be challenging. It was hard. It was really, it was really challenging, challenging mentally um, and emotionally because sometimes you had people that were seriously in there ready to take their lives and it breaks your heart so i had a button underneath the desk that i had to have my finger on and then you had people that just wanted the experience of knowing what it was like to take their family their wife and two children sitting in the waiting room what it would be like to drive off a bridge Mm. just so it was really difficult but it was it was satisfying when i didn't have to push the button but sometimes you did Sometimes they had to push the button because that meant that we had to intervene because they were a threat to themselves or they were a threat to others. I see. So it's not like in that exact moment they were going to commit suicide. That button was for this is serious. This person needs to be staying here. Absolutely. If we need to get them. Yeah. So um, I really loved I really loved that Um, part of medicine. It was it was it was interesting. It was you saw so many different um, personalities walk in the door. No pun intended. (laughs) No pun intended. Personalities. But then there was, you know, there's the good, the bad, and the ugly. And then that's when medicine really started changing to where the pharmaceutical companies played a bigger role Hmm. in medicine. It wasn't based upon what was going to work for the patient. It was based upon who's going to be the pharmaceutical company to cover my radio show on Saturday. So Mm -hmm. we're going to write your prescription, whether we like it or not. I had an issue with that. Are there cases in your mind of, for lack of a better phrase... The ones that got away, someone you didn't push the button on that later on you found out, oh my gosh, he was being completely serious. He went and did the unthinkable. Not once. Great. I have a very, very, very discerning spirit. Uh Uh-huh. I was raised, I'm very strict. It was was a very strict Christian home. Uh So when I started saying, I see, okay, people are going to think I'm whack job. I, when I started saying, I see demonic spirits Mm. and I can tell you something that's going to happen before it happens. They told me, okay, this is your discernment. And I was going, this is higher than discernment. And no one will give me an answer. No one. Like they wouldn't give me an answer until I moved to California and I met a pastor that just said, you are higher than a discerner. You are almost like a seer. Mm. So yes, I have seen ghosts. I have seen demons. Really? I have seen them disappear in front of us on the islands and the uncle's on the street and he saw a demon and I cast it out. And then I don't know, it wasn't a, a human and disappear. So and when did everyone you start freaks seeing out. these entities? I would have to say when I was probably 17 or 18 years old is really when I started asking more questions because I couldn't get a, an actual answer because I was told this, if it's not of God, it's of Satan. So I had to f- battle in my mind is what am I seeing good or is it That's bad? what I want to ask you. Are you only seeing bad stuff or are you seeing good stuff too? Um, well, when uh, my husband got a call from his mother, we were before we moved to California. Um, he said, you know, your grandmother is, is in the hospital. Um, and I said, yeah, she's in the hospital. She's laying here. There's an angel standing here. The room's set up this way and that. I, I explained everything before we walked in and lo and behold, we walked in. Boom. I mean, it was just everything was set up exactly how it was. But I think that helped in psychiatric medicine because you don't necessarily know who's coming in for what and also this was around the time that there was some very popular adhd medications that Mm. teens and adults were chopping 
and replacing as for drug use. Right. So my discernment had to come in to know. I had to know their BS factors. Like, are they being honest? Uh-huh. Are they coming in for use or they really want to jack someone up or then kill themselves? So, yeah, so that's kind of like a the roundabout story of that, how it got to here. So when people hear this about you, and I don't know how common knowledge this is, do they react with positivity or are they more put off by the fact that you have this gift? I have really haven't had anybody um, say anything negative to me about anything like that. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't just go up to people and go, hey, yeah. it's been on my heart to tell you. You know how it is? We're in Texas. <laughs> it's been on my it's heart. It's on my to- heart to tell you this. It's not. But typically, so- my friends know if my hands fire up and they get red, I've got something. I know it. I can feel it. And then sometimes I can walk when I know when something's around that's, I won't try to find it. And then I'll see it. I'll walk this way and someone that's walking directly towards me will walk across the street to get away from me. It's kind of (laughs) cool. Really, it is. I'm like, there it is. I've identified it. So it's someone that could be a possession. Um, Okay. That's interesting. So you always hear spiritual warfare. Right. Okay. So if you go to Kroger, Mm -hmm. are you always constantly experiencing these forces or is it just in specific no, circumstances? Weird. How often does it happen then? Um, I mean, not as frequent. Of course, since we've moved home to <laughs> Texas, I mean, I've have the four corners of my house. I'm like, really haven't been out since. Uh, I was, no, I was actually about to say. Yeah. I bet there's less demonic activity happening in Texas than California. <laughs> in California just saying. Yeah, there's quite a lot. <laughs> now, sometimes if 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 it's, it's kind of like wearing a hat, I guess. Sometimes if it just something flares up. I don't go out looking for it. Sometimes I forget that it's, it's just a gift. But um, sometimes if there is something that's just not right and I can feel it and it's strong, then that's where I just feel like I have to just armor up myself and almost kind of like in my head, I have to put myself in a bubble or saran wrap a space around me. I, I have to do mental type of things. How was it with this discernment that you have working at... A psychiatric hospital. How much did you see when you were within those walls? A lot. I heard a lot of growling. A lot of growling. Um, you would see. I, I mean, I could say I've seen it at churches too. I mean, I've heard a lot of growling. You could see someone um, walk into walk into the room, and then you would just see just a dark, the darkness around them, and it'd be like a shadow that would just come in. And a lot of times, I would just feel it, and you just have to know how to react to it. And I mean. You could feel it and mm. you could see it, but not all the patients were gone. Some of them were, my husband was just killed in a car accident and I need medicine. And then you had the mothers that came in with seven children and couldn't control their seven children. She was so depressed. So they medicated the seven children. I was like, what? That's when things started kind of going downhill. I didn't uh, agree with that. So how did you and Josh meet? Not well, at the hospital. No, not at the hospital. <laughs> Actually, it was pretty interesting. Um... I was single mother, had two little ones. Emma was like two. Ty was five or six. I was out of medicine and decided to uh, get involved in, I'll just be honest, network marketing. Um, So I was a business owner at that point. I was doing health and nutrition. Um, I was getting up in the ranks in one of the companies. I had my own place, my own home with my two kids. It wasn't easy. Trust me, it wasn't easy because um, I was a single mom eating out of a food pantry. But you know what? I busted my butt to take care of those two kids. I did whatever I had to do. So I held my head up high and I walked in there, got my 42 pounds of food. And I was still hustling to work because I knew at that point um, I was good working with people. I understood how people thought. So being able to be an independent business owner and going out and working with other people and other women... And they say, no, I can't be successful. I was like, no, nah, yeah, you can. It's all about how you think. You need to change your mindset. You need to upgrade that mindset fast. So that's why I loved working in business. So I was two days out from being flown to Utah because Utah is like the hub of this industry. And I was being offered $25,000 a month to come in and speak and train specifically women. I get a phone call from this guy from like the beaches of California, right? <laughs> so here I am prepping. I'm at CVS Pharmacy and, and then another guy got on the phone. It's like, hey, I really want you to meet this guy and take a look at this 
So I listened and I was like, all right. So he says he recruited me two times, once in business and then second as his wife. So I said no to him the first time. I really said no. And then literally they called me back. And finally, I just said, just to shut him up, (laughs) seriously, just to shut him up. I just said, here's my credit card. What do I need to do? And plus the product was unique. It was like one of my favorite products. No one would ever out totally opposite from skip from doing weight loss and nutrition and he wants me to talk about reducing emissions you know doubling the life of your engine and increasing your fuel economy and it was like this stuff's crazy so i got excited about <laughs> freaking gasoline dude that's how we started our mindset and when it comes to business when we work together it's just like it just like never stops when you're um looking for something fun to do you go to home depot I love Home Depot. So are you like a do-it-yourself pro or something? No, you know, I like DIY stuff. Uh I don't do any of it. I just get excited to watch people do it. But I love going to the garden section. One thing that came over me that I fell in love with in California was when I walked into their Home Depot there and saw their garden section. Better than the Texas garden sections? Dude, our flowers here suck, bro. Like. They're not birds of paradise. They're not beautiful palm trees, which I did kill one this winter. I tried. I wrapped the guy up, but I just couldn't move in my garage. <laughs> I brought him from California, but I'm going to get him back alive. So I <laughs> I love going in and seeing stuff at Home Depot. I love... Yeah, I like Home Depot. Yeah, I do love Home Depot, and I love their garden section too. So I, I fell in love with the tropical vibe and feel of plants and everything. In California that we don't have here. It was but, funny, but I was—I guess it was just the big move because we went from no electricity in California because they kept flipping our electricity off to fires to, you know, moving here. It's almost like 2020 was playing out in California before it played out for the rest of the nation, huh? You know, I truly, we started noticing, well, we started noticing things before it started getting the media and then that's when social media started threatening us because of things we started noticing i believe we all got covid before covid was even Hmm. a name because i i even tweeted like i have never been this sick in my entire life like something's not right i can't get well this is weird it's just we were watching things take place overseas and getting in trouble for posting what we were seeing why not i mean we were seeing it was just reporting the news and retweeting it, but um, it was just quite interesting, yeah, how mm-hmm. California was. It was very different. They started shutting our electricity off if the wind got above 12 miles per hour. <laughs> then we went and all got generators. So here we are in this environmentally friendly state, pumping generators with fumes going left and right. It was everything that the state said that they hated. So then they're like, okay, well, if you're, we're going to profit off you now. Now you got to come out and we got to inspect your generator. It's going to cost you 400 bucks. Really? They can't, they come out in California if you own a generator yes. and inspect it. Yeah. How do they find out you own it in the first place? They'll Don't drive tell around. Oh. They, they're ruthless, dude. Like they, they they know. They know whose electricity is out. What if they're looking in out. your back? Oh, oh. Oh, 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 I see. Your electricity is out like during a brownout or something like that. I shouldn't be out. Oh, Thank yeah. goodness for my outings to when electricity was off, I we'd go to Home Depot. So you have two dogs. Yes. Bill in Bandit. Uh-huh. Bill. Greatest name for a dog, by the way. I was greeted by Bill <laughs> when I came over. And I'm wondering, have you ever let Bill greet these inspectors in California when they came around looking for generators? <laughs> yeah, People a, did. Well, typically we would get keep Bill inside the house. But, oh, um, that's too bad because yeah. Bill's quite the... Uh, but this is how smart they are, though, there, right? Bill is a mastiff. He's the coolest biggest dog i have to show you pictures he sits on the sofa like this Mm. sits up like a a human oh not like a human being he's like a human being when he sits on the sofa Uh um but it's interesting how they made everything in california they don't have to go to your back fence so if you're running anything from your garage it's outside your fence so they anybody in california can access anything other than your air conditioner huh. that they for somehow put it in the middle of your backyard there but yeah so people are petrified of him um yeah, when they see him, he's huge he'll tear him limb from limb i, I know this for a fact <laughs> so in california do they still allow you to listen to music 
Because I know you're an 80s fan. I love the 80s. It was when, I think it just takes you back to a time in your life when things were fun. Kids were playing outside. You could sing super loud in your car. It wasn't talking about politics wasn't interjected. It was it was not dirty. Yeah. And plus 80s is just like, that's the music that was happy and very loving, especially with all like the romantic type of music. Mm. Now everybody talks about I hate my boyfriend, you know? <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I, I love the 80s music. I still love the 80s music. It's in my car, 80s on 8, 90s on 9 on Sirius XM. That's right, that's right. Best. So your line of work, your having lived in California, are there any celebrities that you've crossed paths with that you would be able to share with us? Um, <laughs> You're like, oh, you threw in that caveat. <laughs> yes, I, uh, I work with lots. But uh-huh. growing up, my father actually... Uh, ran a health club in a very prestigious area of Dallas called Highland Park, right off of Lover's Lane. So we had Tom Cruise come in. Oh, wow. The Dixie Chicks worked out there Mm. um, when it was just Marty and her sister. It wasn't three of them yet. Oh, wow. There used to be just two chicks? There were just two chicks until Natalie came in, and then they all changed. Oh, wow. Natalie Natalie was the interloper, huh? She was. She came in and all changed. Don Henley. My cousin's David Peoples, who is a professional golfer, PGA. And then, of course, with what I do now, I work with a lot of people in, in politics. You could say famous. Um, <laughs> members of the former first family members. Uh-huh. Uh, All right. People in news. Uh, people in radio. I mean, I, I know mm. people from, actually, I know people from CNN to MSNBC to people's last names some other people don't really care for. <laughs> so, and that's Okay. I value my friendships with celebrities. I respect their privacy. Friends with a guy from NSYNC. I've known him since before mm. he was popular. Oh, cool. I gave a CD to Kiss FM before Kid Craddock passed away. So, yeah, it's it's That's really cool. interesting. Yeah, it's just, it's just interesting how so many different things have... And one of the biggest billboard artists in South America, that's uh, Luis Fonsi. I mean, people... Yeah, huge, number one. That's really yeah, cool. Yeah, it's, it's really interesting. A lot of different diverse... Um, Everyone from different industries. I know just a lot of people just through connections. And some of it with recently what I do now is just Mm -hmm. they reached out to me. That's really cool. Yeah, it was pretty cool. So growing up in Texas, what was your earliest memory? My earliest memory was riding with my papa on the trailer, mowing the yard. I was a tomboy, Mm -hmm. so I didn't like to wear clothes very much. (laughs) So they had to tell me at like nine is that a prerequisite for being a tomboy? You don't like wearing I, clothes? Dude, like, I, I, I walked around with, no, huh. with britches on and no shirt. And I had the, the bob haircut. The, uh-huh. You know, that was like... Yeah, I got gotcha. you. I had that, uh, that, that haircut, like a <laughs> bowl haircut. And I remember riding around Pawpaw. Um, that, and then I remember um, playing Star Wars in my backyard when we had the coolest Star Wars and it was snowing. It was one day we had snow day here. And um, I would take the dart gun... And I'd shoot my neighbor, Alan Fortner, in the legs all the time. But he ended up going to the hospital. I didn't know, like, the darts had, like, those needle things on the end. So we'd play Star Wars. And I remember being, like, four. So I remember, like, riding on a lawnmower. And they said, Cammie, you have to start wearing clothes. (laughs) To putting on clothes and then shooting my neighbors with the dart gun. Yeah. I. I, Oh, no. They they called me Helen Killer. Okay. (laughs) Uh, Huh. I'm fun, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Okay. So tell us about your mom. My mama? Your mama. My mom is precious. She was a, she taught aerobics growing up. So she was very fit. We were very healthy. Ate very, very well. She's a sweetheart. Um, She will do anything for anybody. The one thing about my mom that I know sometimes I'll go to her because I'll ask her a question, but she'll tell me what I don't want to hear. That makes sense. She's like one of those, just kind of like, you know, I love you enough to tell you that, you know, this isn't good. So she's just always just been the type that's just loving and nurturing. She has your best interest all the time, all the time. And um, that's one thing I I love about my mom. So, you know, I was raised in home, raised in church. My parents did divorce when I was like 14 years old. But I was raised in church my whole life. And that was one thing my mom was dedicated doing was, I tell you, every Wednesday I was there, every Saturday I was handing out tracks. (laughs) <laughs> you know yeah knocking on doors uh-huh. um and doing that and then um my mom sang 
and church on the praise team. So Okay. Do you want to tell us about your most embarrassing moment? Because it kind of segues nicely there. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so. Oh, no. Okay, so here's the thing. Like, number one. Is, is, is mama going to be okay with you telling the story? Yeah, because I tell it all the time because oh, okay. it's funny. <laughs> no, dude, it's funny because you have to understand that like, my personality is typically like outgoing. Things are funny. Bodily functions are funny to me. They kind of grow <laughs> some people out. I think it's freaking funny. Okay. I do. So here I am, this teen kind of, I guess I was getting into my teenage years. I'm the person that they thought, okay, first you have to understand this. I'm the one they thought was going to get knocked up first i didn't it was my brother he knocked someone up it was not me so they thought i was that so i'm the person that like passes notes in church right i was a good girl i was also naive i thought you'd get pregnant too uh, by french kissing but when i was a freshman in high school so i met the senior then it all went out the window (laughs) you said wait a minute i'm not with child (laughs) oh no my mom i hear this (laughs) yeah (laughs) Oh, oh i'm not gonna tell mom about this okay so anyway she was getting ready to sing at church she was up on stage i happened to be on second row because the youth typically would sit Uh all up on the row so mom is getting up well she had to clear her throat so the microphone i have to give you a visual of this happens the microphone's in her left hand so i see the right leg cross over and she put the microphone behind her back below her butt so when she coughed she flipped and farted in the microphone and didn't hear it because the cough was so loud. But everybody in the church heard it because it was like vibrating no. sound. Oh, no. So they had the it would echo. It would better if she just cleared her throat. No, they had the echo All on. Right. So it echoed. Oh, no. So here I go from sitting sitting up to my head is underneath the pew. I'm rolling. I'm rolling. Does I everybody know living. where that sound came from? Everybody knew she farted. Oh. I mean, the place is like this. While the echo effect was I mean, like, on. get it. This was the time when we weren't clapping. And I laughed. I don't even... And then, like, <laughs> the pastor got up after. He couldn't even look at me because I'm like, red. Yeah. <laughs> and I can't just get up and leave because everyone's going to know. She's got a red face in the second row. She's going to get up and go to the back. Dude, it was so freaking funny. She's like, it did not happen. Like, yes, you freaking did. It did How not happen. How did you happen. not hear that? You were it, hearing things. It was the funniest thing in the whole... It, it was, was a great. door creaking at uh, the other end of the Oh, it was, it was funny. So you have a special relationship with your mom. I do. Obviously. Did she help you get through what ended up being an abusive relationship? It was really hard. Um, I don't ever name names, but it was... When you're in a, a, a long year relationship, she helped me get through it. But also at the time, I have to be, I have to be honest, when you're told you, you, you try until you can't do it anymore, you got to keep trying. Don't give up. Don't give up. So that's what I did until it got to a point when my mom finally said one thing to me and it registered. She said, when your pain is greater than your fear, you'll seek help. And that made sense. No wonder people stay and especially women stay in such abusive relationships, whether it be emotional, physical is because their fear is greater than the pain and their fear is what is keeping them in. So my pain at the point when I just was like, I'm never having a gun put in my face Mm. ever again. Mm. The fear was gone. It was gone. And that's when I was just like, I have to do whatever I have to do. Have to. Yeah. The fear, the fear was gone. I, 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 the, I wasn't scared anymore. I didn't care. I would do anything to stop that pain from occurring. And I was tired. This was a long, long, long time. And so uh, my family was there. My family do not know everything that entailed. Um, I did not allow them to read any of uh, court papers. Um, they don't know. Hmm necessarily a lot of people don't know what happens um in the home they typically just watch from the outside and they can see you can tell someone how they are based upon um 
their personality and if they're angry or if they're a fighter. Or if they're right. This. If it's you bad say, enough in front of people, yeah, what and must people it be knew like the, the temperament. Hmm. No one necessarily knew. Once they, I say this about anyone, and it doesn't matter if they're in a situation that's good, bad, and different. It doesn't matter. Once someone goes home and closes that door, nobody knows what right. goes on behind that door. Yeah. No one. It doesn't matter. You don't have to have an issue. No one knows. Everything changes. So um, she really helped me with that. Um, I, I did a lot of therapy. Sure. I went to a lot of therapy right. um, for that. It took a while. I had to overcome guns. I'm an advocate. Um, so that's interesting because you are a, a big fan of guns. <laughs> um, in fact, how... That, that was used cool. in, this gun was like used in war. In this room right now, um, when you said that, you're a big advocate for guns. I right. looked over here and there's, tell us about this. Uh, um, I, I can't, this is a gun. Yeah, a bayonet on the end. Yeah, it's, um, it's a gun that my stepfather gave my husband. I don't know if it was used in the Korean War. Huh. Not necessarily sure, but if you actually, there's still blood on the tip of that. We've kind of found oh, it doesn't work anymore, but it's so old. It's oh, eventually, wow. but it's so old. But yeah, I'm a vid, big advocate. I was raised around guns. Okay, so you're raised around guns. I was raised around and guns. And then did you fear them because of the relationship? Yes. And then come back to the. I, well, I was. I was always believed that we have been given our God, God given rights to be able to protect ourselves. If if we sure not to point the guns around as. You know, I was raised where the guns were locked up. You know how to, you were going to shoot the deer so we can feed our family for the next six months. We ate hmm. everything that we shot. I mean, that's what we did. Hogs, backstrap. I mean, deer, hogs, we had everything, you know, deer, chili, you name it. We're from the South. We, we hunt. Hmm. So um, gun safety was very, very huge. My daddy used to drive around in his truck and have his guns hanging on the back of the window. That's how it was back in the 80s growing up. Yeah. And, um, everything I, yeah. was safe right there. No one feared them because they were used for a purpose. They weren't used out of anger to where you see like the mass shootings and stuff like that that happens this day. But I never had a gun pointed at me because somebody was angry with me. Um, once it started being used as a controlling factor mm -hmm. to force me to submit, that's when I got scared of them. And it took a while. I mean, I had a, I was in therapy and I actually had a, a, a detective that was in my class with me. He was going through divorce care too. He walked in one day with his holster and they planned this. He had his gun in his holster and it was for him to walk into the church. So I, to see how my, to get me through that. And when I first saw that, I mean, I literally just started trembling because it scared me. It took takes you right back to that place of getting guns. So Josh will take me to the gun club here and he'll be like, are we going to get you to shoot? And I still will shoot and be okay. But I still have that moment where it's like, mm. your hands get a little bit sweaty. Yeah. Um, but I'm a big advocate for, for the right reasons. But I'm, I'm, I'm not one that believes that, you know, just because you're driving down the road and someone pisses you off, you need to flash your gun at somebody else. That's, that's just not, I don't, yeah. I don't understand that mindset unless mm -hmm. you're just really a jacked up person. But but yeah, I'm a really big advocate, big, big, big advocate because I was raised the right way. Yeah. But I can see how people fear them. Mm -hmm. I sure. can see how people fear them. Depends on experience, right? Right. So you and Josh would love to tour the country in an RV someday, correct? Yeah, I told. Yeah, that's why I've, I've told him. I, was like, I would love to see the United States. I mean, we see all these different places on television. We've been a lot of different places. We've been to the Philippines. It broke my heart, you know? I watch stuff on TV and I see the gorgeous beaches of the Philippines and then we, we had to go do meetings in the Philippines so we would travel there and work there and it just, I saw the Philippines. We flew into China, um, went to Jamaica a lot. You know you can't get to any of these places in an RV, right? No, you can't. But in Texas, I've seen a lot of places outside, but I was looking even just the other day at some of the most gorgeous places in Texas. You've seen some of these lagoons that are like crystal. Uh, there's wow. Austin. How close to Dallas Fort Worth? Austin. Oh, these gorgeous you just told me. <laughs> caves in these gorgeous lagoons, clear crystal blue water, spring water, and it's beautiful. And I'm like, never knew that ex existed in Texas. Good place to go in the summer, huh? Dude, like I was raised going to Lukenbach, river rafting. Uh -huh. You know, high school, even in college, you get your coolers. You tie your tubes together and you go down Lukenbach. And I was also raised, you know, with a lake house. That's huge here in Texas is, you know, we don't have beach houses. People here have weekend homes on the lake. That's, that's where cool. my mama lives now. So I want to go look at things in the United States, not fly over them. 
because mm-hmm. um, I see some unique areas, small towns. Um, like seriously, the Grand Canyon. I fly back to Cali. They're like, look to the right. You see the Grand Canyon? Well, I see the Grand Canyon, but I want to go look at the Grand Canyon. Right. There's just so many different places that I feel like a United States has that we're so busy about getting people to go explore other countries. We need to go explore, especially with it. I think more now with, with the pandemic and seeing small businesses being so impacted. Not worried about big box companies because mm-hmm. the government's going to keep them open. Right. But we, at this point, we have a beautiful country right within our fingertips. And if there's anything I can do right now, go to these little places. And I'm really big into supporting small businesses and keeping them flourishing, especially after everything that's just happened. It kind of gives you more of an incentive to want to get out. And go do more things. Yeah, absolutely. So you you have no problem speaking your mind, speaking out on topics and issues that are happening in the world. You're very bold, right? brave in a time where that's not necessarily uh, a characteristic that people appreciate fully. Oh, I, was, um, I spoke out about something and I was the first female in 2015. And when I made that decision to come out and speak out, I was the first female. Everything just changed. Huh. So I have no problem about speaking my mind and speaking my opinion. I do believe that everybody has a right to their own opinion. I will never shut their opinion down whatsoever. Um, I, you know, I've noticed over the last four years, I'll fight for somebody else's speech, but they won't fight for mine. Mm. Um, I don't mind being bold. I am not here. And I don't think anyone... Well, we live in a society now where everyone's... Um, tailored around tissue paper feelings <laughs> and i'm not mm-hmm. I, you have to be realistic in today's day and age especially when everything around us is full of we want you to think this way people stop thinking for themselves because we rely not i'll say we rely i woke up in 2015 to think that oh my goodness maybe what i've been taught in my life may not be correct Maybe what they're saying on television isn't truthful because I'm seeing it this way or they just lied to me, but I watched it happen over here. And at that point, that's when I was like, I'm not going to rely on the television or the media. I started realizing they have their own agenda. They have their own agenda. They all have their own agenda. But if I see something, I'm going to speak out. So when I came out, you know, in politics in 2015, I was the very first female Trump supporter. Hmm. That came out in a video and went viral. But I was also honest. But I was also put down by the Democrats. And I was also put down by the Republican Party because I have to look at things from different perspectives to say, hey, you may like him, you may don't. Hey, you may not like that he's an elite, but guess what, guys? He's an elite. It is what it is. Mm -hmm. No, he's, yes. So I look at things that are practical you know, I mean, I can jump head first in and be bold and say what I think, not just because I like someone, but I can also say what I think if I like them, but also be critical at the same time. I have very different views from other people. I am very center. Um, I'm not the type that just because I like someone and support someone, I have to wholeheartedly believe what they believe. Heck no, then that doesn't make me who I am. Mm-hmm. That doesn't make me individual. That's not going to make the world progress any better. We'd be boring if everyone just had this one type of ideology. And I'm not like that. I'm bold. I'll stand up against the right, the left, the media, the comedians, churches, pastors. I don't care. I will. Now, am I going to cuss them out? No. I'm I'm not going to do anything like that. But I have no problem saying let's just get back to reality and look at things from a realistic perspective and get out of the emotional thought process that everyone's sucked into these days because it will destroy you. And it's destroying a lot of people right now. And it's already starting to destroy our schools. So I have no problem being bold. I know how far to take it. I will never cross that line to push it over the edge too much. Because right now, you know, we live in a rage society where you get so upset, you just want to go out and say it. Then you're like, oh my goodness, I just got kicked off the social network for saying that. Because in that moment, that rage, I call it rage tweeting. Like (laughs) rage, sometimes I see something on TV and I'm like, the world has lost their flipping mind. They have. The world's gone freaking mad. And we have to just get back to being able to think for yourself. You have to be able to think for yourself and then you go, I don't like this, but let's look at it from this. We don't. A lot of people look at it this way or look at it this way. They stop getting, common sense is gone. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
gone. <laughs> and I have to I have to look at it in a common sense way. And I don't care if it's popular or not, but it has to be reasonable. And then I'm okay with that. And I, I am okay with that. And if people get mad at me, that's fine. They're right to their own opinion. But sure. I'm I'm just not gonna be they're not gonna mold me in what they want to mold me into. I'm gonna look at the situation and say, is it factual? If it's not, if it is, okay. Mm-hmm. I'll go this way. Well, if people want to find your views on any number of things, they pretty much go to any social media platform, right? Twitter, Instagram, Parler, Telegram. What's Cloud Hub? Cloud Hub is new, and, and it doesn't matter what industry or field you're in, if you're a business owner or if you have something you're passionate about. You know, my new slogan for like 2021, and I think my, my friend Matt told me this, and I am embracing it, is be everywhere. Mm. In today's society, you have to be everywhere because you don't know if you're going to be there tomorrow or where you're going to be tomorrow. <laughs> That's a great point. And, you know, it really is. It could be you could make a factual statement today and you are canceled. Yeah. No, it can be facts are canceling now. And your entire um, account is Gone. erased. Yeah. And for no explanation and you can't. So mm-hmm. um, I'm... Uh, um, be everywhere. So Cloud Hub is like a new, it's like a new platform. They're working on it. Um, but it's almost kind of like a Twitter, Facebook, and a YouTube, kind of like all in one. So they okay. have groups, you can post. It's, it's, it's interesting. Okay. Um, and, and it's the same handle, effectively, if everyone at, just types yeah, in. Yeah, it's at Cam. K-A-M-V-T-V. V-T-V, as in Veterans TV. So it's Cam with a K, and then A as in Apple, M as in Mary. And then VTV as in Veterans TV. So you can look at that. I'm on Telegram. I'm not, um, haven't been pushing Telegram as much. Okay. I've kind of kept my Telegram small just because I really am enjoying on Telegram. One, I don't feel threatened there. Two, I have no trolls there. Mm. Three, I can post anything I want. It doesn't have to be about, it can be food, political, whatever. And we have a conversation and I like communicating. So I keep a smaller community on Telegram a little okay. bit. Anybody can join my Cam VTV page. Do you ever post like I videos, post, I have my own so, channel. Uh-huh. And then I post stuff on my channel to keep things current. If I'm like right now, it's spring break, so I'm not really putting pushing a lot. If I'm busy, I don't push a lot on there. But I have my own chat. So oh, in cool. my own chat, we it's a group. So we just kind of like go back and forth. They can post whatever they want in there or not, or just uh-huh. say something and reply. So it's really nice to be able to communicate with other people and not literally have that filter of hate. Yeah, um, true. Jump in because then it actually brings reality back to what <laughs> right. we're used to in 2019. Mm-hmm. So I enjoy having 2019 conversations, not 2020 or 2021. Maybe 2022 will be different. It just depends on what state people live nah, in. Nah, it won't. Hey, but we live in the United States of Texas, so right now we're freedom. We, we live in some freedom. I love it. Anything we missed? Anything we need to cover here? I think we're good. I think one day that I need to take over and ask you some questions. You know, people have suggested that along <laughs> the way, but I think there's enough of me that comes out in these interviews that, that pretty much everyone, it would just be a rehash of everything. That is the one-liner I guarantee you use for every single show. What's that? What you just said. What did I just say? I don't even remember what I just said. I have bad memory. I have to write everything down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to say that. What, uh, you think everything comes out in all the interviews. I think oh, you're really oh, good. Oh, oh okay. It's <laughs> okay. Uh, you know what? Let me, let me look at these questions here. Where was I born? Atlanta. Grew up Metro Atlanta. Any siblings? No. Only child. Go you're to only college. child? Yeah. University of How is it being an only child? So were you like really spoiled? <laughs> How did you come to Texas? Uh, Glenn you're going to cut me off. Glenn Beck. Glenn did. Yeah. I've been working with Glenn for over 10 years now. Really? We used to work in New York. Yeah. And then he moved his operations down here. See, look at how much ground we've already covered. Isn't I could great? totally take this conversation and just Q&A y'all, but I'm not going to do that. Well, you know what? Someday maybe that'll happen. Yeah. But I think we, we already covered, you know, several questions right out of the gate. So. I'm Emmy. I'm pretty simple. Okay. Well, Interesting though. Yeah. I got well. lots of stories I could tell you about. We'll, we'll keep that for another Wait, oh, that was the whole point of this podcast. <laughs> what, what do you mean you got more stories? All right, thank you so much. Camry Nelson, uh, thank you for being my guest on this week's edition of At The Mic. Thanks for having me. Camry is a ball of energy, to be sure. Uh, it was great getting to meet her and her husband, Josh, who's also a lot of fun. I, I really hope that I can introduce you to him as well in the not-too-distant future. Uh, And maybe we can get those stories that Cambry alluded to there at the end. We've been at this podcast for over a year now. So if you've missed any of the previous episodes, uh, I hope you'll head over to atthemikeshow.com. Be sure to check them out. Uh, We're closing in on 50 episodes. 
And uh, when you're over there at, at themikeshow.com, please be sure to contact us. Tell your friends who like fun conversations with good people uh, to please check us out as well. And if you're listening to us on iTunes, I do hope you'll feel inclined to leave us a positive review. Next week, I'm going to talk to a guy I met because, uh, well, due to the fact that I injure myself, and I do it often, I met him at physical therapy. Uh, It's kind of what I do. His name is Chris Brown. He's got a story to tell. He has been a minor league pitcher. Uh, He's a great artist. He's colorblind. It's fascinating. He's going to tell us all about it next week. But until then, be free, and thank you for listening to At The Mic. This has been At The Mic with Keith, an independent podcast production. Head to atthemikeshow.com for archived episodes, sponsor information, and ways to connect.